Is it worth removing a wedge in your bag to add a club like the Square Strike? We're gonna do a test to find out if it's worth it in this video, so stay tuned. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. We upload golf content weekly. Hey everybody, this is Brady and Tyson with Golf Ascending and today we're going to do a review on the Square Strike. So how many times have you guys chunked a chip shot, hit it two feet in front of you, or bladed it across the green? Like me and many other golfers, I bet you have too. There is nothing worse than having an amazing drive, a pretty good approach shot, and then when you get to that short chip shot, you just shank it and it goes way off target. Those types of chips, those types of shots add strokes to your game. Sometimes two to three more strokes because maybe you went way over the green or maybe because that shot you went directly in the sand. And that can just really add up and mess up your score at the end of the day. All right, so what is the theory behind the square strike wedge? Well, they put it into these terms. Have you ever shanked a putt across the green? Have you ever hit it fat? You know, and the answer is, you know, most likely no, you haven't done that. Um, and so what they wanted to do was put the putting into chipping and make it a smooth and easy stroke. And so what they've done to do that is they have weighted the putter or weighted the square strike so that yep. it feels like a putter. They have, at least on the stock grip, they have, it is a round grip that is a little bit longer so that you can grip it lower for those more finesse type shots. And they say as long as you go back straight and through, that your shot will be on target and you won't fat it and you won't blade it. All right, so let's go over some of the specs of the Square Strike. The head weight is about 130 grams, which is about the typical weight of a putter and 30 grams heavier than a typical wedge. It has an anti-chunk sole, which means it is extra wide and gently curved from back to front and heel to toe. It has a no dig leading edge, so unlike the sharp edge of a pitching wedge or a short iron, the square strikes beveled or angled leading edge helps prevent the club from digging. It also has anti-rotational weighting. The square strikes design team moved weight from the heel area to the toe to prevent excess club head opening and closing going back and through. It is also designed to have a precise center of gravity and high movement of inertia. If you notice on the club face, it has two vertical lines that are supposed to help you to square up to your target line. And they also kind of show you the center of gravity on the club. All right, guys, so this is my club. This is my square strike. Yeah, laugh right now at me. <laughs> um, but I actually was intrigued by this club just because I do have some difficulty around the greens. And so I kind of wanted to test it out for myself, um, kind of give you guys my honest review on the club um, and as you guys can see it is in the black um, something that I did not like about the original square strike was that ugly green color that just kind of yeah. made a statement of I'm a gimmick club yeah it looks like a toy <laughs> yeah so that was one thing that was like uh, I don't know that even if I liked the club if I would ever put that in my bag and so when I saw the black version I thought okay I could manage with this um, and so when I ordered it got it in the mail, Brady actually was pretty surprised at how, how good it looked. Yeah, looks good in his bag, matches his TMDs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, the other thing that I added to this club was I actually added a putter grip, and specifically the same exact putter grip that is on my Betnardi Queen Bee, just in a different color. Um, see the link in the details for that review. But I decided to put the same grip on there as my putter because they encourage you to swing the square strike like a putter and so I thought if I have the same grip on this club that I do my putter it will be just a good reminder for me to have that same stroke of just straight back and straight through yeah. and so yeah that's why I did that and you know so far I've been able to do that and so I think it's been a really good help to have that grip on there all right so we took this club on the course to test out a couple different shots that uh, I might experience on the course that I may want to use this square strike um, for. So the first shot that we tried was, um, it was in the fairway off the green, probably about 25, 30 yards away. Yep. And uh, 
you know, we tried it from there, um, and I was able to, you know, get it up in the air and, it, and let it kind of run out a little bit. And what was nice about this shot in particular is with the square strike sitting at 45 degrees, it doesn't really, you know, check and sit very good. So it does need a little room to run out. So this actually was a pretty good, um, you know, area where I could maybe see myself using this club in that type of situation. Another shot that we did was um, just around the fringe. Um, you know, it's those those kind of questionable lies where you're like, do I putt? Do I chip? Um, not sure what I do. Um, this did a great job there. It just kind of, you know, popped it up a little bit and, you know, like the fairway shot, it rolled out kind of like a putt did. And so that actually worked really good there as well. We tested this also in the rough and Again, it got right out, um, popped it up in the air, rolled it on the green. And actually, interestingly enough, out of the rough, this club actually pops it up higher than if it were on the fairway. So I actually thought that was really interesting. Um, we also tried this club out of, you know, really thick kind of weeds, sagebrush yeah, type of grass. Tall grass, difficult shot. Um, you know, same thing. Uh, what was interesting about this was I just felt like the weight of the head of the club helped me, you know, just get right onto the ball and pop it up. Um, something that I found with wedges in those particular shots is sometimes you can go right underneath them. Um, sometimes you just don't have enough club to get it out. You just mm -hmm. don't know. And so the weight on this square strike, I think, was a huge benefit out of that lie. Um, another lie that we tried was behind a bunker so having to chip over the bunker onto the green we actually got inspiration on this type of a shot from rick shields's video um and he he said in there you know that this might not be the best club for that and we actually you know we did this club or i did and it did the job it got me right over the bunker um you know landed on the green and it did roll out a little bit, but I was safe. Yeah, that's where I was most shocked because that shot can be pretty intimidating when you got a bunker ahead of you. And you could have one of those where you duff it and it goes like two feet. And then you got a bunker shot, which could add another two strokes possibly. So every time he was safe. It was pretty cool to watch. Yeah, so it might not have been as close as if you took like a lob wedge yeah. over the bunker um, because that shot would, you know, if you hit it right, it would sit right where you wanted to. This one did roll out a little bit, so it would be tricky if the hole was directly behind the bunker. Yeah. I could see, you know, there. But then again, you're safe, you know, you're putting. Yeah. And so I think that's what you have to realize is if this club is in your bag and you're worried about shots like this, this will get you in a situation to be able to putt. Um, you know, speaking of bunkers, we also did try this club out of the bunker. Um, I do not recommend it. Um, I'm sure there are ways to get it out of the bunker, but me personally, I would prefer hitting a sand wedge. It did not look good. Yeah, it was, I mean, I, I think if you had to hit it out of the bunker with this club, you would have to alter your swing, um, and kind of lean away from that, um, you know, back in and through type putter motion. And so, yeah, we, we tried that. Um, so, yeah, I got kind of a good feel for this club around the green. And I think just the moral of the story was is that it got me in play. It got me in a position where I could make a putt. All right, so we decided to take the square strike out on the course and put it to the test against a sand wedge. And before we do, make sure to comment below which one you think is going to win, the square strike or the sand wedge. All right, guys, gonna do a little test. I've got the square strike wedge versus my sand wedge, a 54 degree. We're gonna see out of six balls, um, which one performs better. So let's get right into it. Start with the uh, 54.
guys, so that was the sand wedge. Uh, honestly, that's probably some of the best chipping that I've done. As you saw, two of them were off the green. I got two within 10 feet, and then um, the, uh, the other two were just a little bit further away. All right, guys, now have a square strike. Let's try to do a little bit better. guys so there you saw it so with the square strike I was able to get all six of the balls on the green only one of them was within that 10 feet but there were two that were really close to that 10 feet mark um, you know is it worth taking you know a lob wedge out of the bag you know if you struggle around the green you just want to get it in play I think yes and that's one of the problems that I've had um, is just getting the ball in play and as you can see too this shot is a very difficult shot um, so I think it really did put this to the test with a square strike. It performed, it did a job. Um, it got me in play and I'm able to actually attempt to maybe putt for par, save bogey, um, maybe avoid those extra strokes around the green. All right, so just some final thoughts on this club. Um, I think that it does a certain job really well. If you are finding yourself in a situation where you're around the green a lot, and you struggle chipping, uh, you know, if you're in deeper lies where, you know, a club like this might help you, I strongly suggest putting something like this in your bag. Um, what this, you know, in turn did for me, both just, you know, on field testing during my real rounds is that I was in position to, you know, make par putts. I was in position to save bogey, not get the double or the triple bogey. This put me in a good position to save several strokes. Um, and so that's honestly, is just my big key takeaway from there. Um, as far as the look goes, um, you know, it's not the prettiest thing in the world. Um, definitely not the prettiest thing if you get the green one. Um, <laughs> it is yeah. just not a good look. Um, but the black one is tolerable. Um, I will recommend if you do get this club, you know, the standard grip may work for you, but if you have a particular grip on your putter, I would suggest matching it to your putter. Because if you do, it'll get you in that mindset of, this is a putter stroke, swing it like a putter. And if you do, you won't have any issue, you know, with that stroke and what the club's actually intended to do. So yeah, those are um, basically just my thoughts on this club. Um, it probably will be going in the bag for the time being um, just because I'm not as comfortable with those chips and those types of shots. But Brady actually made a really good point about this club, about chipping, um, and he referred to it as a training edge. Do you want to go ahead and talk about that? Yeah, it was interesting. When we took it out on the course, um, when Tyson was hitting with it for a while, I noticed that when he switched to the sand wedge, when we did that competition, um, his chipping got way better and it made me realize this helps you to square up the club and square up the face and, you know, get a good clean chip shot. And so if anything, if it's not something you use in your bag, in my mind, I, I thought it was a pretty good training aid on top of that. If you don't want to use it in the bag, because I could tell that his swing stroke and the way he did his chips were a little bit different, a little bit different. Um, and I wish I had <clears throat> a chance to actually try this out myself. That is one of the disadvantages we have of being righty and lefty. I can't try all the cool clubs he gets or training aids and vice versa. But um, from what I've seen of this, I can see, like Tyson said, it does a job and it could save you a ton of strokes. I'm personally not to the point where I'm thinking of getting it yet. I do like having the different wedges and having that versatility and a variety of shots that I can take with them. 
But at the same time, I see why it's enticing to have such a club because there are days when I have those chips and those hits that can totally ruin the hole, mess up your score because you hit it off the toe and it goes flying to the right. And then the crazy thing is, is once you do that, I feel like I do it for the rest of the round because it's just in my head. I'm like, okay, don't hit it right. Don't hit it right. Boom. I hit it right. So I see why something like this would be so enticing and helpful to your overall score and game. Yeah, and uh, just kind of to let you guys know what my current bag setup will be with this club. Um, some of you might be wondering, you know, what club do I take out for something like this? Um, that was a question that I had um, just because I actually did find a lot of value in having a club like this in the bag. So like Brady was saying, you do need to have some wedges because there are certain shots that this club just cannot do. Yeah. Um, and so something that I have um, decided to do in my bag is to have a sand wedge at 56 degrees. That way it's a little bit higher lofted than like the 54 degree sand wedge. And you could kind of treat it like a lob wedge sand wedge, depending on if you open or close the yep. face. Um, so adding that club in there and then making sure that you have a gap wedge as well. Um, it kind of evens things out a little bit. Um, so that's kind of the current setup that I'm going with. I find benefit, you know, in a combination of both this club and my wedges together. Yeah. So, yeah, there you have it. That is my mine and Brady's review on the Square Strike Wedge. Um, if you guys like the video, um, make sure to subscribe to you know future content from us and click the notification bell. We upload golf content weekly. Yeah, and let us know if you are thinking of buying the Square Strike or something similar to it yourself.